Boulder Mountain, I want to talk to you about the best-selling book of all time. That is the Bible. It's not even close. The best-selling book of all time is by far the Bible. As we begin a new year, it's an opportunity to reevaluate our Bible reading plan. If we have one, if we don't have one, either it's a recommitment or it's maybe for the first time ever, we're going to begin to read the Bible on our own. Listen, devotionals and Christian books, there's a place for that and it's good and helpful for us. But it's also good for us to learn to read the Bible on our own and to learn to feed ourselves as we study God's Word. And so I'm just going to share some things with you about the Bible, the best-selling book of all time. It's really 66 books in one, 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament. It was written over 2,000 years in three different languages on three different continents. And what's fascinating, this book is written by shepherds by prophets, by kings, by judges. It's written by ordinary fishermen all over those thousands of years. And yet, we can learn something new for our lives. We can learn something new about God just by reading it today in our language. So a couple of things. Uh, Find a good translation that you understand. It's important that you would understand the translation that you're reading. Uh, God wants us to understand his word. He's not trying to confuse us or complicate us. So he's given us some tools to be able to do that. Uh, a couple things I'll share just personally with you. Um, find a Bible that you're not afraid to beat up. This is kind of an older Bible I have. It's taped together. Um, the pages are kind of falling off. It's, it's highlighted and... It's a Bible I know, kind of like an old used phone book. For anybody over 40, they know what a phone book is. It's used, it's written in, it's, it's uh, you want a Bible that's, that's been used and you know where certain notes are and certain pages are. So get a Bible that you're not afraid to, uh, to dent up a little bit. Um, I have what I call a moleskin. You can get them at Barnes & Noble, you can find them online. It's just a little journal. Um, I love it. This one has lines on it, but uh, it's a place where I can write down some of the things I'm learning that God is showing me. Another thing I have is a, a, a little pocket of colored pencils. So I like to highlight. You can highlight a word. You can highlight themes. You know, red could be the love of God. Green could be any time it's talking about new life. So you can come up with your own theme of what colors mean what. Or you can just take a good old pen and highlight, circle, underline to you, you would know what underline means, what circle means. Uh, but use your Bible, right? Make notes in it, write in the margins, draw pictures if that's the best way that you learn. Uh, another tool, I'm gonna give you two more tools. If you wanna learn about the different genres of writing in the Bible, things like wisdom literature, or narratives, or historical accounts, or prophecy. There's different types of literature in the Bible. There's a book I encourage you to read. It's called How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth. Now, this is for those of you who want to go a little deeper. Um, it's a great short read. It has been really helpful in my life. How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth. Gordon Fee and Douglas Stewart. Um, it, it walks you through the different parts of the Bible and you will find it very helpful. Sometimes we have questions when we read something. It doesn't make sense. A website that I'm going to refer to you. I, I trust this website um, that you can go to, gotquestions.org. Just simply www.gotquestions.org. You can type in your Bible question there. It's a, it's a site I trust, and it's helpful. Uh, you can always come to me, ask me. I can say, I don't know if I don't know, or uh, we can have a conversation about questions you might have about the Bible. But gotquestions.org is, is, a, is a great place, or how to read the Bible for all it's worth. A couple other tools and tips. I'll put this in the newsletter for this week, but identify a specific location when it comes to a plan. Identify a specific time. Um, Read in an organized way. If you can read with friends, uh, the YouVersion Bible app is a great tool to invite some friends. You can read together on your own 
and then you can share comments. It's a great way to keep each other accountable to, hey, did you do your Bible reading today? Uh, keep a journal, but also give yourself a lot of grace in this. Again, God's not keeping score. We're doing this not to earn his favor, but to get to know him better. It's not about earning. It's about learning who God is and what he wants for us in our life. Uh, one of the one of the important disciplines of a, as a disciple of Jesus, right? Our mission as Boulder Mountain Church is we want to make disciples. So one of the disciplines of a disciple is that we learn to feed ourselves. It's great to hear sermons and read Christian books, but what does it mean to read the Bible on my own and learn some things on my own? In the future, we'll talk about how do I how do I understand God's word? What are some of the steps we can take? We'll talk more about that. But today, I just want to encourage you to come up with a plan. It could be read one Proverbs a day, whatever day of the month it is. Today is January 3rd, so read Proverbs 3. It could be as simple as that. Read one proverb. Just be start simple. If you've never read the Bible, I would just encourage you to start with one book, the book of Mark or the book of John. Just read it. Read it at your own pace highlight what's God saying to you and what does he want you to do. Let me give you an example. If if I read, go and buy milk, right? I'm going to ask myself some questions. Um, I'm, I'm going to observe it, okay? God's asking me to buy milk. I'm going to ask myself some questions. I'm going to interpret this, okay? So somebody needs milk. What type of milk? Is it 2%? Is it whole milk? Is it skim milk? When do they need the milk, right? I'm going to ask myself all these questions. Who specifically needs milk? Does the whole family need milk? Where do I go to bring the milk? These are all the questions I have as I read the text. And then the, so it's observe, interpret, and the last one is apply it. So as I read that text, the most important thing about that text is that I actually do the text. More important than knowing the text is doing the text. So may we not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word as well. So my application would be to go and buy milk, right? It's just uh, an example there, a fun little example of uh, see what the text says, observe it, ask questions, interpret it, and then apply it. Uh, video devotional is a little longer today, practical. Hopefully it's been helpful for you as you contemplate some of your Bible reading plans for 2024. Uh, love to pray for you. Father, I thank you that you've given us your word. Thank you that you're, you have revealed to us in your word. Thank you for those that have translated it into our own language. I pray that your Holy Spirit would, throughout this year, would enlighten us, as, inspire us as we read, would help us understand what we are reading through the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that we would commit that we would learn some disciplines this year when it comes to scripture reading. And I pray for anyone who has questions or may be already confused that they would they would reach out uh, for help. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, the newsletter this week, I'm going to write a little bit about this so you have it in writing, some of those helpful tips and tools. If you have any questions uh, about the Bible, I would love to have that conversation with you.